So you're a gaming YouTuber, but you're not getting any views or subscribers. You're investing a crap ton of time, effort, and energy into your videos, but they all just get a depressing grand total of four views. Your mum, you, you, and you. And when it comes to subscribers, well, let's not even go there. So what you need is a clear, simple process to follow that will practically guarantee that your channel gets thousands of views and subscribers as quickly as possible. And today I'm going to do my best to give you just that by revealing my new and updated method that I've used to grow a gaming channel from zero to over 23 million views. G'day, my name is Marcus Jones. Let's get stuck into this. So let's break down what I call the GYGC method, the nine things you need to do if you're serious about growing a highly successful gaming channel. And it doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner or if you've been doing this for a while, all nine of these things will apply to you if you wanna be successful. And I know that because when I first started my gaming channel, I had no idea about any of this stuff. And I know my channel grew depressingly slowly. I remember I thought I was doing everything right. I was posting two videos a week. I was following all the advice from the gurus and I thought I was creating really great videos, but then every morning I'd wake up and basically nothing had changed on my channel. And on the rare occasion that I did post a video that fluked a measly handful of views, almost none of them stuck around. But you can't do this to me. You know how much I sacrificed! And I remember just being so confused and frustrated. And this all went on for about a year. And during that time, I only managed to accumulate about 150 dead subscribers. But then I stumbled upon a few things and in the space of a little over six weeks, I went from getting 15 subscribers per month to over 1,000 subscribers per month. And from there, things just started snowballing and my channel went on to reach over 23 million views. And so this is the video I wish someone would have created for me when I was a struggling YouTuber because it would have saved me so much time. And so I wanna encourage you, don't just watch this video and then move on to the next how to get a million subscribers in five minutes videos. See, if more information was the answer, we'd all be billionaires with six pack abs. So instead, Instead, I challenge you to commit to this video. Watch it two, three, four, ten times, however many times you need to fully internalize all nine of these steps, and then you need to tattoo them on your forehead, and then you need to take action. Because in the seven years I've been on YouTube, and after helping literally thousands of people grow their gaming channels, I've never come across someone who is properly doing all nine of these things, but is not succeeding. So let's walk through the GYGC method from the least important tactic to the most important tactic, but I should caution you that most of these tactics are reliant on one another. Another, so I wouldn't recommend skipping around. Frequency is how often you post your content, which is not to be confused with consistency, by the way. Frequency is important because the more videos you post, the more opportunities you have to be discovered. Let's say you're a YouTuber that posts one video per month. Over the course of a year, you are going to have 12 opportunities, aka videos, to be discovered by new viewers. Now, while that's okay, if you contrast that with the channel that posts twice per week, they're getting 104 opportunities to be discovered each year, and that's a lot more than 12. Also, posting videos frequently gives your viewers a reason to stick around. If I discover one of your videos, I like it, and then I check out your channel, and I see that you're posting more of those videos frequently, that's gonna give me a much stronger incentive to stick around your channel and subscribe than if you post highly infrequently. Because one one of the biggest reasons as a loyal viewer someone will subscribe to a channel is because they want to see more content from that creator they're subscribing to. And if you're showing people that you do post more content, that you are frequent, that if they subscribe, they'll be rewarded with more awesome videos just like the one they subscribed for, you'll be surprised by how many more subscribers you'll get. On a more internal note though, frequency is also helpful for you as a creator because it helps you get up your momentum, which helps you maintain motivation. As James Clear, the habit expert says, one of the most effective forms of motivation is progress. An example of this is streaks. When you do something frequently and you get on a streak, there's something in our psyche that makes us want to maintain that streak. For example, if you've posted one video a week, every single week for the last 10 weeks, you're probably gonna have more motivation to post a video on the 11th week, even if you don't necessarily feel like it because you wouldn't wanna break your streak, would you? On the other hand, if you posted incredibly sporadically and the last time you posted a video was a month ago, I mean, what difference is missing yet another week gonna make? On top of that, frequency helps you improve your confidence, your content and your skills as a creator. Now, I personally am a believer in quality over quantity when it comes to YouTube. Ultimately, I think quality will trump quantity. However, quality comes from quantity. It's a paradox. So while I don't necessarily encourage you to go out there and intentionally post content that you know is absolutely terrible and that you could pretty easily make it so much better, but I do think that it's gonna take you a number of videos to build your confidence as a creator, to find your voice, to learn and hone your skills and your style. And if you're frequently posting more and more videos, you're 
going to traverse that learning curve so much quicker. Now, in terms of specific numbers, there are obviously exceptions, but my preference and my advice to you is to try and post videos at least once per week. The ideal is three times per week, in my opinion. Now, you might be wondering, well, why is the ideal not every single day? The reason for not posting daily, in my opinion, is that for the vast majority of you, unless you have a team or someone else helping you on your channel, posting daily is a road that leads to burnout, unless, of course, you have an exorbitant amount of free time. X factors are what I call those unique and special things that make up your lucrative brand. They're the specific little things that add up to make you different from all the rest. So for example, think about your favorite YouTuber. What are the unique recurring characteristics in their personality or their content that make them different? What are those things that make you like them more than all the other YouTubers? Play a little game, ask yourself why a few times. Okay, they're entertaining, why? They're entertaining because they're the funniest YouTuber you know. Okay, but why are they funny? Are they willing to say or do things that nobody else would dare say? Do they have a uniquely quick wit with accompanying quirks and sayings and in-jokes? Do they jump out of their bedroom window when anything remotely interesting happens? Do they make fart jokes that really knock the wind out of you? And it doesn't have to be just humor. Maybe they just have relatable or distinctive life circumstances. Maybe they have particular attitudes or philosophies about content creation or maybe just life in general that you find admirable. Or maybe they have a very uniquely in-depth knowledge or skill set that's highly relevant to the type of content they're creating. Whatever it is, when you dive into to objectively why it is you like a particular YouTuber over all of the others, usually you'll find there's multiple little reasons or factors that make up why you like them the most and these are the X factors. Sometimes they come naturally to a creator and sometimes they're cleverly engineered, but obvious or not, in the vast majority of successful channels, you'll usually find them there. Now it is quite difficult to measure the impact of X factors initially, but they definitely have impact. Firstly, as a small channel, they help distinguish you from the noise. Most of the time, it's unlikely that you're gonna be creating a type of content content that has never been created before in the history of YouTube. There's just too many YouTubers for that nowadays. So your X factors are gonna help distinguish you from everyone else. They're gonna help you stand out to new viewers and they're gonna make you memorable, more interesting and more likable to existing and recurring viewers. Now acquiring X factors can be different for every YouTuber. For some of you, you might be able to consciously and strategically engineer X factors into your content. For example, Mr. Beast. Debatably, one of Mr. Beast's biggest X factors is the fact that he is willing to spend crazy amounts of money in ways that most people wouldn't even dream of. Technically, any YouTuber with enough money could apply that X factor. However, the fact that MrBeast is able to spend so much money is the thing that makes it such a big X factor for him because few people are able to replicate that. However, an X factor can also just be a particular interest you have or a side of your personality that you simply exaggerate and showcase to people. PewDiePie is a good example of this. Sure, of course, there's the fact that he got into the YouTube scene early and he had the first mover's advantage, but he's also known for his unique memes, his weird phrases and these little little in-jokes. And these are X factors that make him stand out from the rest and make his hardcore fans absolutely love him. Now I want to call out a caveat here and that is whatever your X factors are, they need to be audience centric. So I remember once I was talking to a student and he was in a very competitive niche, he was creating Fortnite videos and we were talking about what makes him different. We talked about finding a sub niche, which is something we'll talk about later in this video as well. And of course we talked about X factors. And when I asked him about his X factors, he told me that after doing some research, he found that a lot of the creators in his niche all spoke very clearly, all had very clear and understandable commentary in their videos. And then he proceeded to tell me how in his videos, he often mumbled. He slurred his words, he spoke very quietly, sometimes to the point that it was almost impossible to understand what he was actually saying. And he told me that he felt this was his X factor because it made him different from everyone else, and maybe it even made him a little bit relatable to people. However, let me ask you, does watching a commentary video from a YouTuber who mumbles, slurs their words, and is difficult to understand at times, sound like an enjoyable experience for the viewer? Probably not. And so while this is probably the most extreme case I've come across, the principle still stands. Whatever you identify and choose to push as your X factors on your channel, they need to be something that actually add value to your audience's experience of you and your content in a positive way. Standing out in a negative way, by having some really weird skill, or simply just being different for the sake of being different in a way that doesn't add to your content whatsoever. That's not gonna help you. So how do you know when you've got a good X factor? Well, the biggest sign of a good X factor is when people start remarking about it in the comments of your videos. Now, especially if you're a small YouTuber, this might not happen right away. For example, if you go to the comments section of a Mr. Beast video, you'll find comments of people fantasizing about winning the money, people complimenting Jimmy on his generosity, or people just simply gawking at the sheer amount of money he's willing to give away. In other words, you'll find that the quantity of money Mr. Beast gives away in his videos is something that his audience care about, and it positively adds to their experience of the content. Similarly, if you go to a PewDiePie video, you'll find people referencing PewDiePie memes or quoting Felix's meme remarks. And you can see that his memes and his quotes 
quotes clearly have a real impact on people, which is one of the reasons why he's become so well known. So if you don't have any X factors, your channel is always gonna lack this certain dimension and it's gonna be so much harder for you to succeed. So even if you're a smaller channel and you don't have many comments, ask yourself, hypothetically speaking, what aspects of you or your channel are noteworthy enough that you could realistically see a bunch of people remarking about them in the comments of your videos. So even if you're not getting comments right now, think into the future and imagine, what is it about you that people might look up to you for? For example, it could be something as simple as this. If you're a tutorial channel, and one of your X factors is that you keep all your videos super concise compared to everyone else. You'd know that being concise is a good X factor when you start getting comments like this one, this one, this one, and this one. But he's a bit of a dick. I will send you to Jesus. Consistency is absolutely critical to YouTube, but consistency is often confused with upload frequency, which is the amount of videos you post, as we talked about earlier, or productivity, which is the amount of videos you can create in the time you have available to you. But consistency, while it does encompass some of those things, is actually different because it actually means doing something in the same way over an extended period of time. In other words, when something has strong recurring elements, we call it consistent. Synonyms of consistency could be steadiness, stability, constancy, uniformity, reliability, Dependability, dependability. For example, if you upload a video every single quarter, so every three months on the dot, you upload a new video. Technically, you are being consistent. You might not be frequent, but you are consistent. Now, I'm not here recommending you post one video every quarter, but I share that example to illustrate how consistency is different from frequency. Again, if someone watches one of your videos, they like it, and they notice that you consistently post videos that are consistent with the video that they actually like, then they're gonna be more likely to subscribe because the reason someone will subscribe is because they wanna watch more videos that are like the one they just watched and enjoyed. And so you're raising the incentive to your potential loyal subscribers. Consistency also conditions your viewers to act or feel a certain way. It's basically like ethical brainwashing. So some examples of how consistency can be beneficial to you is firstly, if you're consistent in the style of your thumbnails, often your viewers, especially your regulars, will grow to recognize your thumbnail style. If you grow large enough, sometimes your whole community will grow to recognize your thumbnail style. And what that means is that anytime someone glances at your thumbnail, they'll immediately pick up that it's a video from you without having to read your title or without having to look at the channel name below that video. If you have a good reputation, you want people to recognize you as quickly as possible because they'll be like, oh, that guy, he's cool. I'm gonna watch this video. Another example of how you can ethically brainwash your viewers is through your posting schedule. If you post frequently, but you also post consistently, because if you consistently post your videos once a week on Friday at 9 p.m., people might start recognizing that, and if they really like your content, then every Friday around 9 or 10 p.m., they'll tune into your channel. On the flip side, if you're posting videos completely sporadically and no one has any idea when or why you're gonna upload videos, your viewers aren't gonna know what to think. And that's why being super erratic or having big breaks in posting your videos is not a good idea. Only total noobs do that. <laughs> yes, that's a terrible thing to do. Who would do that? Also, particularly if you are creating great content, consistency is gonna help you establish your reputation because consistency fosters trust. On the other hand, inconsistency fosters the opposite. For example, if people have trust in you, your attitude, your mentality towards life, your thoroughness, your quality of content, the way you make them feel in your videos, whatever it is, and then you do something that breaks that trust, your viewers will feel betrayed. Bruh. Even if it's just an illusion, after watching one of your videos, your viewers will often develop expectations for the way they think things should be on your channel. And often these expectations can be formed very quickly in the space of a single video, for example. However, when your content or actions start not corresponding with the expectations your viewers have for you, they will feel betrayed, you will lose their adoration and trust. And this all happens even though you've never explicitly promised your viewers anything. Now you might say, well, that's all well and good, Marcus, but I actually don't have any viewers or subscribers at this point, so being consistent is not actually going to matter for me and I understand that but the upcoming points in this video will help you with the whole views problem but also don't discount the impact being consistent can have on helping new people discover your channel in the first place see being consistent helps the YouTube algorithm classify your channel so that it knows a bit more about who you are who might be attracted to you and is able to better send your videos to the right people see the algorithm's job is to connect audiences to the videos that they want to watch and one of the main ways it does this is by analyzing viewers habits and viewers history it tries to figure 
figure out what content certain viewers have watched and what content they've been satisfied by. And we see a certain similar group of people are watching a certain type of video and they all seem to be satisfied by that video. It's gonna be like, hmm, I'm gonna see if I can find more people who are similar to this group because they might also be satisfied by this type of video as well. Now, if you're consistent, then this phenomenon is gonna work in your favor. But if you're inconsistent, if you're continually creating random content all the time, while all of your content overall might be good because it's so inconsistent and viewers are gonna be sending the algorithm so many different signals, some will be liking things, some will not be liking things. It's gonna be all over the place. The algorithm is gonna get confused as to who it should promote your videos to. And when the algorithm gets confused like that, it's just not gonna send your videos to anyone. The pool of people it promotes your videos to is usually going to be very small. Speaking of consistently creating a certain type of content though, here's our next point. Find a good niche. If you try to create a channel that appeals to everybody, you will appeal to nobody. At a high level, this is why so many generalist channels get their asses handed to them by niche channels. But let's take a step back real quick. How do I define niche in this particular circumstance? Well, a niche is a specific segment of a market. It's a specific type of content that appeals to a specific type of person who watches and enjoys that content regularly, sometimes called your target audience. And I've created a little framework for this and I found that good niches tend to be about three or four layers or subcategories down. For example, if you're in the video games market, which most of you watching this are gaming YouTubers, you could get to a niche by being a bit more specific. You could go from video games to just Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is a specific video game. You could then go down one more level and you could create Star Wars Battlefront 2 comedy videos. And you could even go down to a sub niche where you create Star Wars Battlefront funny clip compilations. So you can see how as we go down the levels, we're getting more and more specific. We're going from just a video game channel to a Star Wars Battlefront 2 channel to a comedic Star Wars Battlefront 2 channel that just posts clip compilations. And in this specific instance, the gold is either going to be the Star Wars Battlefront 2 comedy channel or the Star Wars Battlefront 2 funny clip compilation channel. However, if you're just starting off as a general Star Wars Battlefront 2 YouTuber or you're just a gaming YouTuber in general, in my experience, you'll have a much harder time succeeding. Now, while often a niche is a specific type of content for a specific type of game, don't make the mistake of thinking that that's the only definition of a niche. It is possible, however, much more complicated and challenging to do correctly to find successful niches that involve playing multiple games. However, if you want to do this, the content that you create for those multiple games must have a very common through line and relatively strong X factors. For example, we could go video games as our market, Star Wars video games as our sub market, and then we could go news and updates as our niche. Despite the fact that the games we might be covering could be completely different to one another, they have a very strong through line. And chances are, if you're a gamer who likes to be in the know and you're a massive Star Wars fan, you're gonna be interested in every single video this channel posts. So if you're in a niche, in other words, you're consistently creating a specific type of content, it will give people more incentive to subscribe to your channel and it will help the algorithm classify your channel, just like we talked about in previous points. But successfully niching down is more than just posting a certain type of content consistently, even though that's a big part of it. Niching delves into the topic of supply and demand. See, one of the biggest problems we have on YouTube as small YouTubers is competition. For example, if you're creating Minecraft Let's Plays videos, you are competing with the likes of Jacksepticeye because Jacksepticeye has also created Minecraft Let's Play videos. If you're making Fortnite funny moments and epic gameplay videos, you're competing with the likes of Laserbeam because that's the type of content he's created. And the problem is if you're trying to compete with these massive YouTubers, you will get your ass beat worse than a misbehaving six-year-old in an ethnic household. I guess I just hate to see a child go unbeaten. At this stage in your journey, you can't compete. So the trick is to not compete. See, in order to be in competition with someone, you need to be playing the same game as them. In this circumstance, I'm not talking about video game here. I'm talking about game in the literal sense of the word. For example, the English Premier League's Manchester United don't have to worry about competition from the NBA's Chicago Bulls. Because while they are both sporting teams, they're not directly competing against one another. They are in different arenas. And so that's how you want to think about and get around the problem of competition as a small gaming YouTuber. You find a game, aka a niche, that's specific enough that you don't have to compete with all these massive YouTubers. Because while these big YouTubers might have all the views and subscribers, we all have the same amount of time and they can't be creating every single piece of content that could possibly be created. They just don't have the time. So the trick to picking a good niche is balancing that supply and demand. And let's first talk about supply. You want to find a niche that's small enough that there's not a stifling amount of competition. But that's only half the equation because demand, aka people wanting to watch that type of content, is equally as important as supply. 
For example, if you go to YouTube and you type in Fortnite funny Mongolian throat singing Taylor Swift parodies, you will find that there are precisely zero channels dedicated to this glorious niche. And you might think to yourself, it's, it's free real estate. estate. But let me tell you, my friend, there's a very good reason for the lack of supply. And that reason is, aside from me, nobody wants to watch that type of content. So in summary, not only does picking a niche involve consistency and creating a specific type of content and making sure that it's specific enough that there isn't an overwhelming amount of supply and massive YouTubers creating content that's going to beat yours into the grounds, but you also need to bear in mind and do your research to make sure there's enough demand in that niche to make that content worth creating in the first place. Now, I know it sounds complicated and that's kind of because it is. It does take a bunch of research and often some trial and error to get it right. But when you do find that content market fit, when you do find that niche that just clicks with you, I promise you it will be worth it. In fact, for most of us, it's a necessity. Without finding your niche and that supply and demand balance, you'll be about as successful as a waterproof tea bag. By the way, if this video has been helpful so far, please do hit the the like button. I put a ton of time into pulling this stuff together for you. I'd love for it to spread to more people. Session time is the overall amount of time a viewer spends watching YouTube. It's kind of complicated, so let me give you some examples. If you have a 10 minute video and one viewer watches that video all the way to the end, you will receive 10 minutes of watch time, pretty simple. However, if you have three 10 minute videos and that one viewer watches your first video and then your second video and then your third video all in the same session, you'll have earned yourself 30 minutes of session time. But what's cool is that session time doesn't just operate within your own channel. See, if that viewer watches your first 10 minute video, then it goes and watches someone else's 10 minute video, and then they come back and watch your third 10 minute video, it's still 30 minutes of session time. And the algorithm loves session time because YouTube's goal is to make money. The YouTube execs don't report on how many lives they've changed each month. No, they report on their profit and loss. And YouTube makes money by getting viewers to watch ads. So for example, every time a viewer clicks on a new video, they usually get a new ad, sometimes two now nowadays and YouTube makes cash. We've got to have money. And generally speaking, the more time a viewer spends on YouTube as a platform binging videos, the more money YouTube makes. And so in order to foster an ecosystem where viewers will spend as much time on YouTube as possible, the algorithm rewards videos that keep people on the platform. Now, as we mentioned, session time isn't just about your videos. You can increase session time by sending viewers to other people's videos, but you probably don't want to do that. If you're going to put all this time into your content, you want people binging your videos. And the good news is that if you've been consistent and you've picked a good niche, then increasing session time, then you're already halfway there to making your channel more bingeable, but you can go one step further. And that is to specifically think about and design your channel in a way that makes it super easy, in fact, encourages your viewers to binge your content. For example, if you're creating a similar type of video, create playlists and series that will encourage people to watch multiple of those videos. Or even if you're not a channel that could create a series, let's say you do individual tutorials, chain your tutorials together. For example, when you're creating a tutorial, think about the next logical thing most viewers might wanna learn after they watch your tutorial. Then have a second video on that and promote Promote it in the end screens. You could do the same thing for the second video, then the same thing for the third video, and all of a sudden you'll have people binging your tutorial videos. And so by having this high level and practical strategy to increase the bingeability of your channel, you will be getting a massive competitive advantage over the majority of people because most people don't think about this and you'll be getting more session time than them. And despite the fact that intentionally manipulating your viewers into spending their entire lives watching an endless string of gaming videos is morally questionable, it's one of the best ways to get a ton of promotion from the algorithm. Them. And as the ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius would say, man who go to bed with hard problem, wake up with solution in hand. I don't know what that has to do with the morality of session time, but making cringy masturbation jokes is a lot easier than contemplating deep existential problems. So you're welcome. Moving on. How do we define a good video idea? It's a video that's enticing, it's exciting, or it solves a specific problem for the viewer. In other words, it's a video that viewers actually want to watch. Now that might sound really obvious, but you'd be surprised by how many YouTubers, and in fact, you might even be guilty of this as well, simply create content that they want to create without even thinking about viewers and how the video you're creating could be something they would actually be willing to spend their precious time watching, and that's kind of a problem. Let me put it bluntly. Sometimes the videos you want to create is actually different from the kind of video that a viewer in your niche would actually you want to watch. <laughs> Now we'll talk about how to actually get people to click on your videos and give them a chance in a second, but we're not talking about click-through rate right now. We're talking about the core fundamental concepts of your videos. It's like the plot of a movie. You can take a movie plot and you can manipulate its image to consumers in so many different ways. There's the trailers, the marketing, the actors in it, the editing, the directors, all that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, if the plot of the movie is like watching grass grow, it's probably not gonna be successful. So when it comes to coming up with good video ideas, there are many different ways. However, there are three buckets that I like to think about a lot. The first First type of good video idea is one that captures a trend. 
It's about harnessing attention that's already out there. See, attention follows attention. You don't necessarily have to generate attention from scratch. You can simply go out there, locate the pie and take a piece of it. And I call this trend surfing because surfing provides us with a helpful analogy. See, if you want to surf, you can grab your surfboard, head down to your local pond and violently thrash around like a dying monkey. But you'll probably struggle to generate even mediocre sized ripples. And surfing ripples is about as fun as sticking bicycle spokes in your eyes. So instead, you'd probably be more successful if you headed to an ocean. See, an ocean's way larger than your local pond. Plus, there's already waves there that you can take advantage of. In an ocean, you don't need to generate the attention from scratch. You just need to know how to re the waves and position yourself in the right location and with a bit of good timing and skill you'll be shredding your local surf break in no time just like I do every weekend. It's gonna be awesome. So you want to think about attention as the general body of water here and the waves as the trends. As a small YouTuber, you can often be focused on trying to create attention, trying to generate waves. But the easier thing to do is often to take advantage of the vast ocean that already has waves instead of trying to turn your duck pond into a wave pool. A great example of this is Mr. Beast and his Squid Games video. Mr. Beast is an incredibly talented and creative guy. He comes up with some incredible video ideas, but his most successful video surfed a trend and that is why it is his most successful video. The next type of video is a searchable video. You Usually it's something that solves a specific problem for the viewer. How-to videos are perfect examples of this. Now searchable videos tend to be more evergreen and often if they haven't already been created by someone else in your niche, they can be created at any time. However, I want to make something very clear here. The searchable video is where you find something a lot of people are searching for and you reverse engineer that attention. I'm not talking here about just keyword optimizing your existing videos. Sure, optimizing your metadata can help, but you can be the most talented SEO YouTube expert in the world. But if the video you're creating isn't one that there are a lot of people searching for, then it's not really a searchable video. The last category of video idea I like to think about is unique or noteworthy video ideas. They're the types of videos that often you can come up with on your own and they might not necessarily be searchable in the sense that they're optimized around a specific phrase that a lot of people are searching for and they might not necessarily be about a trend. They could be created at any time. However, they still spark an intense interest and curiosity in the viewer and that's why they can do so well. And going back to Mr. Beast, he's a perfect example of this. While he definitely surfed a trend to get his Squid Game video, he's also able to come up with a ton of super random but unique and noteworthy video ideas and concepts that really grab us viewers for one reason or another. And so whatever video ideas you choose to pursue, you need to remember it's not possible to make a bad video idea. A video where the entire premise is not something viewers are actually wanting to watch succeed. Even if you have the best marketing, the best editing, the best SEO, if your video idea sucks then nothing's gonna save you. For example, I think it'd be very difficult to make a watching paint dry for one hour straight video succeed because there is nothing whatsoever interesting about that concept. Even incredibly boring videos, for example, Mr. Beast listening to its everyday bro for 24 hours straight. At least it has something interesting about it. The fact that someone would listen to a song non-stop on repeat for 24 hours straight, especially a song that is so, well, I mean, you know, watching paint dry for an hour straight, it's boring, it's not long enough to be noteworthy, and it's just a bad video idea, so, you know, don't do it. Well, I'll be damned. Your click-through rate is the amount of people who click on your video after they see it listed on YouTube, divided by the total number of people who see your video listed on YouTube, regardless of whether or not they clicked it. So for example, if 10 people see your video listed on their YouTube homepage, and one of those people clicks, you will have yourself a click-through rate of 10%, because one is 10% of 10. So improving your click-through rate, in other words, making your videos more clickable, is incredibly important, because if you can't nail that side of YouTube, then everything else falls in a heap. If you can't get people to click, you won't get views. If you can't get views, you won't get watch time. If you don't get watch time, you won't get impressions, you won't be able to monetize your channel, and you won't get session time. And so in other words, all the work you put into your channel is completely useless if you can't first win the click. On top of that, click-through rate's incredibly important because the algorithm recognizes how important it is, and the better your click-through rate, the more likely it is the algorithm will promote your videos. One of the biggest factors that will influence whether or not the algorithm will promote you is whether or not it thinks your videos can win clicks. So how do you optimize your click-through rate? Well, there are a couple of main ways. Firstly, how Having good video ideas, having great thumbnails, having great titles, and having a good first few lines of your description. Now we've just talked about video ideas, and the description only makes a small impact, and so that leaves us with titles and thumbnails. Basically, they just need to be pretty damn freaking good, no pressure. So find out what's already working out there, and then do everything in your power to design a thumbnail and title that literally grabs your impressions by the eyeballs. But you've probably heard all the level 9 YouTube wizards harp on about how important it is to make good titles and thumbnails. So now that I've reinforced that boring yet crucial point, here's something you might not have heard. While your title 
tile and thumbnail should be good individually, they also need to work together. Your tile and thumbnail combo is just that, a combo. And to really maximize your click-through rate, you should treat them as such. For example, if you look at this thumbnail, while it might be bright and eye-catching, it's probably not that interesting to you, right? However, when I reveal the title, you'll see that the magic is in the combo. All of a sudden, this video is much more intriguing, right? So while this is an extreme example, the principle still stands. You want to try and think about your title and thumbnail as a combo, not individual elements. And when you do that, you'll find yourself being able to maximize your click-through rate in far more exciting, complex, and clickable ways. At the end of the day, your content is the backbone of your channel. And so you better make sure it's bloody goddamn satisfying for your viewers. And by satisfied, generally we're talking about videos that are engaging or valuable enough to keep your viewers watching all the way to the end of your video. Now it's basically impossible to get 100% viewer retention rate, but you should be doing everything in your power to get as many people as possible to watch your video to the end. And when they reach the end of the video, you want them feeling happy with their decision to have watched your video. Bonus points if you can exceed their expectations. And so what that means is don't leave them on a cliffhanger or not give them what it is they came for because you think it will increase session time. Some people try to leave viewers on a massive cliffhanger or not even provide viewers with the value that that video promised and they try to direct those viewers to another one of their videos thinking it will increase session time. But most of the time it just pisses the viewer off which sends negative signals to the YouTube algorithm and then the YouTube algorithm will slaughter your channel along with your hopes and dreams. Now the best way to create content that satisfies viewers is to, cue Captain Obvious, create awesome videos. Creating awesome videos will naturally result in viewers wanting to watch more of your videos and subscribing so they can bookmark your channel and watch even more of your videos. And when these things happen, the algorithm picks up on these signals and it's gonna promote your channel way more. Now, when it comes to improving the quality of your content, there are a couple of different types of quality. There's objective quality, and these are the concrete things that you can measure empirically. For example, a video's resolution, a video's frame rate, your microphone quality, et cetera, et cetera. Now, for most channels, objective quality won't matter so much once you go beyond just like a decent USB microphone and a HD video. At that point, you'll find increasing your objective quality doesn't necessarily correlate with your results increasing and of course there are also tons of channels who don't have good quality audio and don't have good quality video and still do very well but in most circumstances if you can improve the objective quality of your videos it's going to improve your viewers experience of your videos but not every facet of quality is measurable and that brings us to subjective quality this could be your editing style your specific sense of humor the way you structure your video scripts or whatever now, of course, this all seems very subjective, but at the end of the day, you know you're making better videos and satisfying more viewers when you see your viewer retention graphs start to go up like this. Now, some ways to start learning and creating better quality content. Look for case studies of people who are already successful. See what they're doing to impress their viewers. Of course, you can also learn from your own mistakes. If you ever created a video, then rewatched it maybe 24 or 48 hours later and thought, that was a mistake. If you're human, then the answer to this question is probably yes. And so your job is to find out what made you go, mm, and then don't do that next time. Also, don't forget about the quality quantity paradox we talked about earlier. If you're continually trying to make each video better than the last, and you're creating a lot of videos, with quantity, your quality will improve drastically. But now you might be wondering, okay, Marcus, that's all well and good, but I don't even have viewers in the first place. Well, firstly, when you start paying attention to your click-through rate, like we talked about in the previous point, you should start to see some more viewers. But even if you aren't getting any viewers, fine. You've got five views. Your job is to make all five of those people watch your video all the way to the end. I challenge you to get all five of your viewers to reach the end of your video. Now, five views might not sound like a lot, but think about the last time you were in a room with five people. Sure, it's not exactly a crowd, but five people is still five people. Try and create content that's going to be so satisfying for them that they're going to watch it all the way to the end. And if you can do this, soon you'll find yourself with a lot more than just five people. Is it possible for something to be more important than creating great content? Yes, YouTube is hard. Now, I believe the GYGC method you've just learned in this video will practically guarantee your success if you implement it properly, but these tips aren't gonna implement themselves. So here's my practical mini skirt of a motivational speech for you. And by motivation, I'm not talking about mindlessly never giving up or trying to pretend that you're motivated to do something you don't really wanna do. But take a step back and look at this practically. Over the long term, you are the driving force behind your channel. Without you, the GYGC method, or even any other growth method for that matter, is about as useful as an ejector seat designed for helicopters. Because if the GYGC method is your vehicle, then you are the engine. And if the engine isn't operating at its fullest, or if it's like a Peugeot engine and just flat out burns out and breaks down, then regardless of how great the rest of your vehicle is, it's going to the scrapyard. And now all this might seem obvious, but let me ask you, have you thought about investing in yourself? Do you have, or have you paid attention to cultivating a winning mindset? You're putting all this effort into watching videos like this and optimizing your channel and your videos, and that's great, but have you put any effort into optimizing yourself? I can't give you any simple actions or principles that will suddenly grant 
bring you a winning mindset because this is more to do with psychology than the YouTube algorithm. But while I'm not a psychologist, so feel free to take my advice with a spade full of salt, here's what I believe to be one of the most important, if not the most important elements of a winning mindset. See, imagine for a moment that all of the air in the room you're sitting in right now is extracted. Imagine you're trying to take a breath, but in shock, you're realizing that your inhalation isn't satisfying your body's need for oxygen. You gasp and you try and inhale again, but the same thing. Your lungs are starting to burn, your heart's starting to pound, your head's throbbing too. It's like someone's repeatedly hitting your head with a baseball bat. Imagine being in that situation. Can you imagine how hungry you would be at that moment for oxygen? How motivated you would be to get a deep breath of fresh air? That almost obsessive level of hunger is a near unstoppable force and it keeps you motivated and inspired no matter what obstacles you face. When you want to succeed as badly as you want to breathe, nothing's going to stop you. And again, I'm no psychologist, but every super successful YouTube creator I've ever worked with has had this almost obsessive hunger for YouTube. And that's why I think it's so important because today you've learned exactly what it takes to grow a successful gaming channel. And the fact that you're here watching this video means that you're more committed than most. But even if you watch this video multiple times, and even if you take consistent and intelligent action on everything you've learned, it's not going to be easy. And even if you do achieve massive success, like so many others who have followed this method, it's still not going to be easy. For the big and important things in life, they're almost always incredibly difficult and the timing is almost never right. But it's not about trying to find the perfect timing or about having everything handed to you on a platter. It's about being hungry enough to work with what you've got and do what others aren't willing to do to overcome those obstacles. So let me ask you, are you committed to turning your YouTube goals into realities or do you still just kind of want it? Now, I hope you do have the hunger and the fact that you're here watching this video is a sign that you very well might. But you might think that putting everything you learned in the GYGC method into practice is going to take you a long time. Or maybe you think it's almost impossible for you to do. So if you give me a moment, let me quickly tell you about the fastest way I know to learn and implement everything we talked about in this video. It's my new YouTube online course. Like seriously, if you want a practical step-by-step -step, no BS guide that shows you exactly what to do and how to do it so you can start getting thousands of views and subscribers quickly, then this course is for you. It's already helped me and my students get really incredible results. So rather than tell you about it myself, here's what a few of my students have had to say. Before I started the Grow Your Gaming Channel course, I had 70 subscribers. It was about 70, but now I have over 70,000 subscribers. Since completing this course, I've gained over 1,000 subs in just the last two months. Maybe a few months after meeting Marcus, my YouTube channel skyrocketed. I'm now doing over $10,000 a month. This is a really, really good program. Very well made. Mark has explained everything very well. It's a very good way to learn the skills you need to be good at YouTube or to make good content. After doing the course, my videos are looking really good. It's allowed me to be able to be like, okay, I really could do something like what your channel is doing. The Grow Your Gaming Channel course taught me what I needed to know to make good YouTube videos. Everything is in there that he doesn't leave anything out. He doesn't waste your time on things that you don't need to know. The very first thumbnail I made after I did the graphic design for GYGC, I think the CTR went from 5% to 18%. It was a great class. It was fun. The group was great. They were all helpful. I recommend this course to any small YouTuber out there. I highly recommend taking this course. It's well worth it. The course is well worth doing. Kind of like recommend it to a lot of people. I can't recommend it highly enough. Enough. It's amazing, honestly. I highly recommend it to anybody who's taken YouTube serious and wants to avoid a year's worth of mistakes. If you are looking to start a gaming channel and you're serious about it, make sure you buy this course because you won't regret it. I'll cut it short there, but if you're serious about growing your gaming channel and you want to learn more, then check out the link below. Oh, and you should know that signing up is completely risk-free because this course is literally guaranteed to improve your results. So if you go through this program and you're not happy with the results it brings you and your YouTube channel, just email me and I'll refund your entire investment. So if you want to start getting views, if you want to build a community, and if you want to start taking steps towards maybe even making a serious income from your gaming channel, then click the link in the description. I'll catch you there.